and this way we'll do it this way then all right tonight we're studying in Colossians chapter 3 verse verses 1 and 2 is what we're going to be looking at if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth and a lot of wisdom a lot of wisdom in that right there and all you have to do really is just look on look at what's going on uh, in the earth right now and uh, you know there's a lot to be grieved about not only in our country all around the world all around the world and, and whatever so uh, getting your mind off of this world uh, is a blessing there is a striking change from chapter 2 to chapter 3. The grave warnings against the dark and gloomy errors, the grubious errors, and that's what false teaching is. It's the grubious, dark and gloomy. All right, doesn't make you feel good. Doesn't even make you like life, you know what I'm saying? Makes you want to hurt someone. All right, and mainly it wants, makes you want to hurt yourself because that's what false teaching does, all right? In order to be right with God, some people teach, you, you can't be right with God without torturing yourself, you know what I'm saying? All right, but let's go on. The grave warnings against the dark and gloomy errors of false philosophy and false teaching give place to a luminous and inspiring picture of the glorious privileges and lofty destiny of the child of God. The opening verses of this chapter teach that being raised with Christ into newness of life, the Christian should aspire to the attainment of the highest blessings. Man, what a blessing that our life can be uh, filled and, and we should aspire to this. We should want to do this. We should want and believe that our life can reach everything that the Bible says it can. The high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 <coughs> excuse me if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of the throne of God. In another letter Paul had spoken of the believer as dying with Christ and being buried with him and quickened with him made alive with him but here in this verse of Colossians chapter 3, the apostle advances another step and declares that we are also raised with him. We are raised with him, not uh, just uh, quickened and made alive, but we are raised with him. The union between the born again believer and Jesus is so complete that they, the born-again believer, participates with Jesus in all he has done. We're connected to him. Everything that he has done, we get to participate in it. The death, we participate in his death. We participated in his burial. We participated in his resurrection. And we participate in his ascension. That's why Paul says... Uh, we have been made to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But uh, let's, let's go. <coughs> Excuse me. I, got, I was cutting grass earlier. And I think I got a little bit of grass in my throat. So, all right. All he has done. Where, in Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, uh, verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so we also should walk in newness of life. The old life. The old man. The old uh, man. The old way of living. The old man. The sinful uh, creature that we once were. Uh, has been done away with. We should be walking in newness of life. All right, as the body. Or as a dead body of the man cast into the sepulcher. Of Elijah revived and stood up the moment it touched the bones of the prophet. So the soul, so our soul, 
dead in trespasses and sins, that is before Christ, is made alive by believing contact with Jesus and rises into a higher and more glorious life. Man, well, that's why it has been said that, what? We didn't start living until we got saved. Because, now we thought we were living, we thought we were having a good time uh, doing what we were doing as sinners and you know, the, the, the shackles were off, so to speak. And it's kind of like being a child. You know what I'm saying? Being a child, there is no weight of responsibility there. Um, and, and really, sometimes even as, as uh, an adult, you know, the weight of responsibility is not there fully until uh, we kind of step up and we take ownership of our life. We take ownership of our responsibilities as sinners. A lot of times we copped an attitude and we said, and that attitude was, I don't care. I don't care about this job. I don't care about this. I don't care. I don't even care if I pay my car payment. Let them take my car. It doesn't matter to me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we drove it for a while. We abused it. And, and we didn't like the car payment. Probably because we bought it before we could really afford the car payment. Uh, but we just want, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and uh, no doubt, perhaps, well, no doubt, perhaps, uh, perhaps we even lied. And I'm thinking about my own self. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it took to get the job done, you know, we did it. And uh, the only problem was we, we didn't do everything that, uh, uh, that was necessary to get the job done because part of it, part of getting the job done is thinking about it and thinking it all the way through. Remember, a builder, uh, Jesus gave the illustration of a builder uh, who at first he didn't sit down to, uh, to count the cost to see whether or not he had sufficient funds to get the job done. All right, he said that person's not too wise, you know what I'm saying? Or what man goes to war, what general goes to war, all right, without first uh, understanding whether he has uh, the ability to actually win the war, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, and uh, we didn't really think about things as sinners because we were too busy trying to be like everybody else with their attitudes and their outlooks on life, you know what I'm saying? Cheating the IRS, cheating this, cheating that, stealing from the boss man, doing what sinners do. That's what we were doing. All, you know what I'm saying? And uh, if you didn't get that far in your life as a sinner because you got saved at a young age, uh, you were heading that direction because that's just the direction most people go. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get ahead in life. You know what I'm saying? cheating to get ahead all right but when we got saved all of a sudden we didn't want to cheat no more you know what i'm saying we didn't want to lie and steal no more at least we should not want to lie and should not want to steal and cheat anymore you know what i'm saying all right thank god that we can aspire to things better all right As a dead body of the man, remember, in the Old Testament, he was cast into the, uh, the sepulcher that held the body of Elisha. And the moment his dead body hit the, the dry, barren bones of Elisha, all of a sudden, that man came back to life. So we, who were dead in trespasses and sins before Christ, are made alive by believing in Christ. Believing contact is our faith that makes contact with Him. All right? And rises into a higher and more glorious life. Man, what a blessing. What a blessing to know I don't have to be the same today as I was even yesterday. I was talking to somebody last week. In fact, that somebody... Uh, made it to the Atlanta Falcons. He's, he's, he's actually heading down to Atlanta, Georgia this week, I believe. And uh, he, he made it onto the football team. He said, he said, yeah, I said, I like that word better. I said, because when you've done your best, there's always better, which means we can keep getting better. 
I know there are some football players that have such a high head about themselves that they don't think they need to practice because they can't get any better. Well, if you can't get no better, you might as well sit down. You're done, right? Because guess what? Somebody out there is getting better. And you may be the best, but guess what? There's somebody out there getting better than you, all right? Because you don't want to practice. You think you don't need to practice. You think you already have it all put together. Well, you might. You might yesterday, but today's a brand new day with a brand new challenge and a brand new challenger. You know what I'm saying? So let's go on. That's just, that's just, that's just kind of slapping that attitude down. You know what I'm saying? That attitude that says, uh, I'm the best there is, and be, uh, other than me, there is nobody better, right? You're good, but you're not that good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all right. Where, uh, you don't need anybody, you know, a basketball player uh, who's a one-man show doesn't win too many baskets. He needs to pass from that other uh, team player, or he needs that assist, or, you know what I'm saying? One man playing five doesn't get the job done. You know what I'm saying? All right, anyways, that's just, that just goes against that uh, attitude or whatever. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. The change that takes place the moment one is saved affects the whole nature of the individual. It is, uh, it's affected. It affects not only it affects their not only their practical conduct, but their intellectual conceptions, the way we think. They see things differently than before because our eyes have been opened to something they they had never been opened to before. Jesus said, "Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven." The moment we are saved, all of a sudden, the kingdom of heaven is open to us. We can see it. We may not see it in all of its glory. But all of a sudden we know it's real. It's real. They see things differently than before. The reason for this is. They've been translated from earth to heaven. We're no longer an earthly individual. But now we are a spiritual being. Our spiritual man has been resurrected. Our spiritual life has been resurrected. And we have been uh, translated from the kingdom of darkness into the what? Marvelous kingdom of the light of his dear son, right? Or however, they, I, I got it down here somewhere. The kingdom of his dear son. Have been translated from earth to heaven. And with this translation. The word translation means. Moving a position. We've been moved. <clears throat> from the position that we were once in. Where were we? In darkness. The kingdom of darkness. Under the master of that kingdom. Satan. We've been moved from that position. Into a position in the kingdom of Christ. Man, what a blessing. What a blessing. I'm not of this world any longer. I'm in it, but I'm not of it. What goes on down here now, it does affect you. That's why, that's why when you vote, you need to know who you're voting for. You need to know about them. Find out all you can about them. Don't listen to their promises because uh, they promise you uh, what they're promising you, they're lying to you about. You know what I'm saying? Because once they get elected, then no longer are they, you know, promising you anything because, and now what they do is they, 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 they do everything they can to really kind of uh, work what they want to do. And oftentimes what they want to do goes against uh, everything that you believe in. You know what I'm saying? Everything you believe in. Uh, they go against it. And then when it comes time to election, for election time again, they'll throw you a bone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you'll vote for them again. Well, find out who you're voting for. Find out what they really believe. Find out if they believe in God or not. If they don't believe in God, don't vote for them. 
You know what I'm saying? If they don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, don't vote for them. Why? Because they're going to vote against you. They're going to vote against you. All right? They're going to they're going to legislate against you. They're going to make you believe what they want you to believe. You know what I'm saying? You don't think so? Well, check it out. All right. Well, who should I vote for? Well, find out who votes. Find out who who's the closest to what you believe. You know what I'm saying? Find out about the person you're voting for. Just because they have a D for Democrat or an R for Republican doesn't mean you ought to vote for the person. Find out about them. You know what I'm saying? Before you vote for them. Because uh, they can make your life good or they can make it miserable. All right? And whatever. So anyways, uh, that's just free for whatever. All right? We've been moved. I'm not, I'm not of this world any longer. Now, what goes on here affects us. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> A lot of our grief, a lot of our sorrow, a lot of our anguish, a lot of our uh, stress is unrelated to us. You know what I'm saying? It's unrelated to, in other words, we're not the author of it. We just hear about it. We hear about another young man gunned down. Or another young woman uh, 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 sexually violated, you know what I'm saying? And it gre- it's a trespass against our own conscience. And then we think about our sons and our daughters, you know what I'm saying? And it, it causes uh, the, uh, stress uh, because we know that there's bad people out there, you know what I'm saying? We know that, man, we could just be in, in, the, in the C store over there when some, some knothead... Uh, thinks that what they have in their cash register is more important than the life of a human being. And so they go in there with a gun or a knife and, and you know, uh, things don't end well. And sometimes it's, it's our sons and our daughters that are killed, innocent. We're just there, wrong place, wrong time. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, what I'm trying to say is that oftentimes this world Uh, The stresses of it are not our doing. We hear about it. We read about it. We see it. You know what I'm saying? And they cause uh, cause emotional distress. It ought not be that way, but that's what happens when you have a country filled with sinners. You know what I'm saying? Heaven's not going to be like that because there ain't going to be no sinners up there. You know what I'm saying? Ain't going to be no sinners up there. No hatred up there. No, no one wanting to do violence to anyone or any, you know. I was cutting my grass yesterday at my, at my house. And, and I kept seeing these, these things jump in front of me. I said, man, that's a frog. So I, I tried not to run it over with my lawnmower. Think, well, realizing it was only a leaf, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, man, I don't want to hurt nothing. I don't want to hurt nobody. You know what I'm saying? It's just a little frog. Yeah. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll smash a, you know, something, a spider or a snake or whatever. You know, some snakes I will. Some snakes I'll, I'll leave them alone because, man, I need them out there. You know what I'm saying? They, they take care of bad things and, uh, and whatever. Now, if it's a rattlesnake, uh, you know, I may, you know, no, no hesitation there. We're going to take it out. You know what I'm saying? All right. Say, preacher, if it's any snake, I'm taking it out. Well, I understand. You know what I'm saying? I do. I'm not, I'm not saying don't do it or whatever. Uh, <laughs> anyways, let's go on. Because of this translation, this moving of position from being part of the kingdom of darkness to being part now of the glorious kingdom of God, our aspirations have changed. We're living for a different reason. I have a new goal. I have a new definition of what success is. We no longer want to be part of this world, but we long for heaven. 
Man, it'd be all right with me. You know, now I understand if we have an unsaved loved one, you know what I'm saying? We, we want the Lord to tarry for their sake, you know what I'm saying? But uh, you can't make a person get saved. If they don't want to get saved, they're not going to get saved, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, but we do, we do pray for them and we do pray that God would tarry as long as he possibly can for their sake and for the sake of all human beings. Amen. The Bible says that God is not willing that any perish, but there comes a time when God says, enough is enough. You know what I'm saying? All right. We no longer want to be part of this world, but we long for heaven, our real and true home. This is what is meant by setting your affections above and not on this earth. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2, set your affections on things above, not on the things on the earth. What is above that we can and should set our affections on? What is up there? Well, number one, Christ is up there. Jesus is up there. The lover of my soul. The one who died for me. The one who took my place, who suffered my agony, is up there. And then God the Father is up there, the one who allowed Jesus to come. The one who actually put the plan together before the foundation of the world. That if we did fail, if we did a sin against God, he had a plan for our forgiveness. So God the Father's up there. God the Holy Spirit is up there. The one who leads us into all truth. And helps us to stay saved. Because without the Holy Ghost, man, it's hard to stay saved. All right? It would be hard. This is where we have already been given a place to sit. Heaven. While seated there, we should allow God, by the Spirit of God, to give us a vision. Man, we're seated there, you know. It's kind of like being seated in a restaurant that overlooks the city. You know, have you ever been in one of those ones and it goes around the city? The Space Needle up there in uh, uh, Seattle, Washington. I worked in a restaurant. I was a dishwasher in a restaurant up there in Anchorage, Alaska. And it had the, 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 the it was up top and, and, the, and, the, and the floor revolved around the city. And so, man, you can look out the, out the window and... And in the summertime, you can see uh, the, the Alaskan range. You can see the, uh, the Chugach range. And you can see another range of mountains. I, don't, I think those are the Aleutian chain. Or the Aleutian, that's the Aleutian Island. I don't think there's Aleutian mountains. But, <coughs> excuse me. But anyways. While we're seated there in heavenly places, we should allow God to give us a vision. A vision of that city. And really the purpose of that vision is what? To help us fall in love with it. Man, I want to fall in love with heaven. I want to fall in love, more in love with heaven and less in love with this world. All right? We ought to let him put a yearning and a longing in our heart to be there even now. To be there even now. I'm not waiting on the next what? God, you know, I want to see, I want to see who the world uh, champion in baseball is going to be this year. Don't come until then, God. I want to see who's going to be the next Super Bowl uh, champion or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Who, who's going to be the, the slam the dunking champion of the, of the, of the NBA All-Star game? I got to find out. I'm not going to miss heaven for our dunking contest just because you know a man can dunk a basketball uh, you know I'm not, I'm not throwing down on it I'm just saying it ain't worth missing heaven for you know what I'm saying alright alright heaven and the people places and things of it ought to be the treasure that we should allow to fill our heart only heaven 
the treasure that we should allow to fill our heart with is heaven. The people and places. What do you mean places? Well, you know, there's places here on earth. You have mountaintops, you have river valleys, you have this and that. You know what I'm saying? That people long to see. Well, there's some places up there in heaven that we ought to long to see. You know what I'm saying? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be. I want to see that river of life flowing from the throne of God. I want to see the tree of life. I want to see that 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 temple sitting up there on the top of that mountain where all the saints of God and and really the the, the natural people at one uh, later on will be able to go in and uh, but they won't be part of that city only the saints will be part of heaven the city all right and that's that's all different study later on but heaven is the source of the greatest spiritual blessing when Jesus ascended into heaven let me just Heaven is the source of all the greatest spiritual blessings. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he received gifts for men. And from his lofty throne, he delights to distribute those gifts to all that call upon him. For it is from heaven we receive pardon for our sin. It is from heaven that we receive the unmerited, undeserved favor of God. And it is from heaven that we receive comfort. In every time of distress. And then it is from heaven. We find a real hope. That lights up the pathway of the future. Heaven is a place where all one wants. Is truly found. All one wants. Is truly found there in heaven. Love. Acceptance. Peace. Joy. You know what I'm saying? It's all found there. What we are longing for, purpose, is found there. And the greatest purpose there is, is to be part of God's glorious kingdom. I'm just about done. Here is the soul. Heaven is the source of all. We are to set our affections on things above. <coughs> These two verses have a similar expression repeated. I, I'm just skipping down because I want to... To seek and to set are used for the emphasis. We are not only to seek heaven, but we are to think heaven. We are to think heaven. We become what we think about all day long. That is why we are to watch our thoughts and to know from where they come. Not every thought that comes into your mind uh, uh, has a, 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 a good uh, origin. You know what I'm saying? Not every thought that comes to your mind has a good origin. A thought that causes you to hate someone, you can mark it down. It came from Satan himself. All right? Satan is the author of that thought. Not God. Not even yourself. Anger. Bitterness, wrath, all of those uh, emotions have a source. And it's not God. All right? God doesn't have that as, uh, you know what I'm saying? All right? We learn from these two verses of the chapter 3 that we have been endowed with vast powers, making us capable of the highest destiny. Sadly, for so many, their soul rises no higher than the things of the earth that will one day pass away because uh, they're of the earth. They are earthly. They only think about this place. They're not thinking about heaven. And without us thinking about heaven, the chances of us making it there are very slim. Because why are not we thinking about, why, why are we not thinking about heaven? And there's only really one true answer. And the true answer is, we haven't yet been saved. The last thing we wanted to think about as a sinner was heaven. 
know what I'm saying? Because to think about heaven meant to think about death and death, and we weren't ready to die. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't ready to die as a sinner. In the risen Savior, we can realize the highest aspirations for our soul. Thank God today. Thank God today we have a living hope on the inside. Thank God today we have a bright and clear future that lies up ahead. You know what I'm saying? The best is yet to come in Jesus. That's why we are uh, to set our affections on things above. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for, God, the work that you uh, not only began in our life, but the work that you are continuing to do. And God, the work that you plan to finish in our lives. We look forward to the day when we do see you face to face and hear from your own, uh, your own mouth and see it with our own eyes. You speaking the words, well done, good and faithful servant. God, until then, continue to have your way in our lives. Open up our eyes, especially the eyes of our understanding. and Help us to see, God. Help us to see in a greater and more clear way, God, the reality of heaven and the possibility of our soul getting there. And God, let us long and yearn to be part of that glorious city Keep us safe in your uh, salvation. Keep us safe in your loving arms all through this journey until we do see you face to face in Jesus' wonderful and glorious name. We pray, amen and amen. Are there any questions tonight? Any questions concerning the Bible study? All right, very good. Now, pardon my voice. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I know it's not COVID, though. I do know that. All right, all right. <laughs> And so, but I will pr probably put a mask on, except for I took my mask off to, to go cut grass earlier, so, and then I broke it in anyway, so. But, uh, don't forget, uh, coming soon, Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday, coming up, all right, beginning Tuesday night, every night, Reverend Love and the Faith Zone, all right, a time of action is going to begin taking place and we're looking forward to it every night every night don't let the devil sow seeds of doubt and discouragement the flesh becomes tired oh i don't know if i could you know get uh, david the bible says he encouraged himself in the lord his god amen encourage yourself uh, in this upcoming revival to to draw closer to him uh, that he will draw closer to you and let's see what god will do uh, in uh, the next week the time of action time of god acting time of us acting too you know what i'm saying some people think that uh you know they they're, they're not supposed to do anything you know what i'm saying the preacher is supposed to do it all well uh preacher is only supposed to preach the word all right now the preacher has to live right too all right in other words what i'm saying is we all have a part to do. And thank God for that because what it means is that uh, God sees you as a team player, as someone he wants on your team, amen, on, on his team, on your team, on his team, all right? And thank God that God wants us on his team, amen? There is no greater team than his team, amen? And we got a wonderful team here, uh, Team God here in Belleville, Illinois, all right? Let's see God do great things in this upcoming revival. It's been good to be in Bible study tonight. We've already prayed to dismiss. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Be the will of the Lord. I'm going to be preaching on, well, come and see. Come and see. All right. So you're preaching. I want to know what you're preaching on tonight. So, uh, so whether or not I want to come and see tomorrow morning. Well, I don't know yet. So, all right. That's what I'm preaching on. I don't know yet. What don't you know? I don't know what I know, but what I know, I know. All right. All right. Come and see tomorrow morning. Have a good night tonight, folks. Wear it out for the Lord. All right. You say, well, preacher, it's the nighttime. How can I wear the nighttime out for the Lord? Well, just do it serving God. Amen. Have a good night, folks. We'll see you in the morning. God bless you. Amen. All right. No, I don't. Did it go online? No. Yes.
Is it? Friends and family? Never happened. Yes, sir. I need a new holder in the boys' bathroom because I busted it. I crushed the tank, the holder. <laughs> I bumped into it. I busted it with my arm. Oh, you hit it with your arm? Yeah, and I busted it. Yeah. I, the first time I done that, I busted the whole. You got a strong arm, man. Well, thank you for telling me. All right.